Morocco is a country of contrasts. So let's look at the contrasting geology and tectonics of two of its mountain ranges, the High Atlas and Anti-Atlas. Together, they separate the arid Sahara Desert from the verdant northwest of the country. Welcome to Morocco. Dramatic landscapes. We're going to go way up north to Marrakesh and do a transect right down here to the edge of the Sahara. In part one, we'll look at the High Atlas range, a young origin, and in part two, contrast this with the Anti-Atlas range, the two separated from each other by the narrow Wazuzet Basin. OK, well, let's go up north to Marrakesh to very different landscapes, a very different climate. So for now, we can zoom in to the Marrakesh segment of the High Atlas. The city itself lies in the Haouz sedimentary basin, a narrow foreland area to the north of the High Atlas range. Looking across the basin, we see that it's largely used for agricultural land. So, driven across the plains from uh, Marrakesh, and we're right up now against the mountain front for the northern side of the High Atlas. Elevated Mesozoic and tertiary strata. Okay, well, it's time to get into the mountain belt. Back in the car, and let's get driving. Okay, well, we've come up into the foothills. We'll go to the high stuff later. But there's some pretty big scale fold structures here. They're quite difficult to recognize or deal with down here at ground level. So to make sense of them, let's step back and use some satellite imagery. On Google Earth, we can pick out dish-like shapes, the rims of synclines. and we can find these on the geological map. I've picked out prominent Jurassic limestones, almost like islands in a sea of older Triassic continental red beds. Okay, so we're driving up across the foothills, gaining heights as the road climbs up towards the pass. We'll stop in a minute and have a look back, shall we? So we climbed up the hill a bit and we get a, a really good view back down to the plains. Down there somewhere is Marrakesh and the hills beyond are way beyond Marrakesh. So this is a view across the foothills of the High Atlas. Let's look across section uh, through these foothills. On this, the synclines are shown overlying half graben containing Triassic rocks, and the basins are weakly inverted, a foothills region with little contraction and large periclinal folds. So it's actually a rather weakly developed fold thrust belt on the flanks of the High Atlas. Not a lot of shortening going on here. Well, let's continue on up the road and the crest of the High Atlas Range. This road traverses the entire range, crossing the watershed at the Tichka Pass. But that's for later. Well, it's 
a world of red rocks. Just Triassic sandstones, as far as you can see, mountain sides or these hillsides of red sandstones. Let's walk over here though, and we can find just how extensive they are. Let's just go behind this tree, and up on the mountain you can see the red rocks there continuing up and they go all the way up into the snowy ledges that run up to the mountain top so trias running all the way up there so trias is on the mountain top so maybe we'll see it when we go further up the road so back in the car and let's continue up uh, towards the pass So as we approach the uh, High Atlas Range, we can see the Trias are stood on end. In fact, they're slightly deformed, aren't they? But then as we go further up, things will change. Okay, back into the car. Let's get going on up. As the road climbs higher, these wooded slopes give way to much more open hillsides. Well, these are the rocks that underlie the Triassic red beds. What have we got? Well, so slates and thin sandstones in here. These rocks are at lower Paleozoic. They clearly deform. They've got this, well, dip to them. And the rocks that lead up there towards those snowy summits, well, those are older volcanics or older igneous rocks that form the faulted basement to the lower Paleozoics. Well, I think while we're up here, let's continue and get a more panoramic view. Well, the view's opening up a bit here, isn't it? Wow. Okay, well, over there in the distance are our red rocks, the Trias that we followed as we came up out of the valley on the north side of the High Atlas. And the ground we're in here, well, those are the um, lower Paleozoics we've just been looking at on our walk up the hill. But then if we walk around over here, we can see that the really high ground with the snow back on up there, well, that's our Trias again coming over the top. And we can track it all the way around to the snowy ledges up there on the far hill. So this structure basically wraps right over with the trias just coming right round. Really simple structure. This structure is, on a large scale, visible on Google Earth, with the base of Triassic rocks tracing out a large, broadly anticlinal structure. And this is borne out on the geological map. The anticline is also an antiform, that plunges off towards the northeast. So this can be summarized 
on our cross section. On this, the High Atlas is essentially a large-scale basin inversion structure, with the crest of the train showing the greatest fault reactivation compared to its flanks. OK, well, let's get back down and continue to walk up to the uh, Tichka Pass. Meanwhile, we're still in the pre-rift Lower Paleozoics and their Precambrian basement. Well, as we get up towards the pass, it's getting a bit windier. Bit of snow on the hills. Almost there now, it's just up and around this corner. The road over the Tichka Pass was opened originally in the 1930s and now sees large numbers of tourists en route to the Sahara. To the south of the pass, you don't need to go far to find rocks younger than the Triassic. These hillsides have Jurassic and Cretaceous strata that dip off to the south, beneath which the Triassic rocks thin away. And we can follow this down one of the side valleys away from the main road. Everything's a bit arid here, isn't it? Certainly compared to the north side of the atlas. And the structure is really simple. A gentle monocline interrupted by a very few local folds. These two are probably weak inversion structures. Otherwise the strata simply dips south, capped by tertiary rocks of the Wazuzak Basin, the southern foreland to the High Atlas chain. This is pretty spectacular, isn't it? So the High Atlas Hills up there, or Atlas Mountains, and all this foreground area running up there are the tertiary deposits of the Wazuzet Basin, which is filled with all these really nice simple fluvial deposits of the basin. Described as the Fallen Basin, really it's an intermontane basin between the High Atlas and the Anti-Atlas down there to the south. So, part of the fill to the Wazazet Basin and you've got these rather nice red sandstones at the bottom. Capped by those rain plain conglomerates which winnow down and form the surface to the basin around here. Really quite spectacular deposits. So this is the southern flank of the High Atlas, those hills going up to over 4,000 metres above sea level. Pretty dramatic mountain front, isn't it? So up in the snowy peaks, we've got Precambrian basement. Down at the foot of the hills, we've got um, Mesozoic, mostly Cretaceous uh, sedimentary cover. What's the relationship between these different units? There's not really a major overthrust that's carrying the mountains out over the Mesozoic cover, not at all. Certainly that's true for the western part of the Wazizet Basin. But let's check out a little further east, where strips of Mesozoic strata poke out of the basin. 
These form a range of low hills. Okay, so we're driving along across the deformed, slightly tilted strata of the Wesleyan Basin. Up in front, well, here come the Atlas Mountains. So deformed Mesozoic strata ahead of the main front of the Atlas Mountains here. Well, nice fold structures, aren't they? So we can build up a cross section to illustrate the structure as we explore. So over there we've got these folded Jurassic strata coming down. They're ahead of the main mountain front and they've formed the outer edge of a perch mini intermontane basin with the quaternary sediment filling it. So a little deeper center ahead of the main Atlas mountain front. The edge of the main range is defined by an anticline here called by lower Paleozoics with a subvertical southern limb. So it's a really great place to appreciate the nature of the mountain from. The stratigraphy, the Mesozoic stratigraphy, just basically wraps up the hill. So at this level of erosion, this elevation, there's certainly no mountain front fault at all. So a simple, if steeply dipping, fold limb that includes Triassic and Younger strata, indeed all the way up to the Playa Quaternary. Again, no major thrust structure at the mountain front. What a great view. So, we've got those green rocks at the top there, which are the Paleozoics of the High Atlas. And then as we come down beyond the, or behind the village on the other side of the valley there, we've got red rocks, that's the Trias. Come a bit further across, we've got Jurassic, those pale rocks are Jurassic limestones. And then we come further across again, all this lot here are Quaternary, or Playa Quaternary um, deposits shed from the mountains and they show growth strata. But to see those, we need to change our viewpoint. So these structures were active, ponding neogene and quaternary sediment. But look at the thickness variations in the Mesozoic strata across the basin. This is thin in the north, expanded Jurassic in the south. So let's infer the deeper geology, which indicates that the neogene structures may have localised on pre-existing basin structures. These include possible pre-Triassic faults that serve to locate the main mountain front. So the Atlas Mountains show little orogenic shortening. They're inverted sedimentary basins that, on this transect at least, controlled the preservation of Triassic strata. But the southern mountain front exemplifies a feature of this part of the Atlas range. Let's step back and isolate what is to become the Western Atlas Mountains between two less deformed blocks. The Atlas once a tract of rift basins. During the Neogene, these basins were inverted with more contraction in the northeast end of the system than in the southwest. So our basin inversion 
pivots at the southwest end. Well, it's time to leave the mountains of the High Atlas behind and the Wazazet Basin as well. You can still see Wazazet City down there in the valley bottom if you look carefully. We're moving south now and we're going to be looking at some very different geology.